All right, folks, once again, I am Tom Downey, rocking this nice new Kashiyama suit. You can get your own fitting from Kashiyama. They're located right here in Dallas. They are providing the clothing for today's show. Today we got some stock up and stock down from a very impressive week one win over the New York football Giants. It annoys me how everyone's been like, it's always oh, just the Giants. It still counts, guys. It's still an NFL team. It's not even the Dolphins caliber. It still counts as a win. So stock up first and foremost here. This one is frankly a no-brainer for me. That is Dak Prescott. He is an absolute stock up for me after week one. I don't know how he couldn't be a stock up move for Dakota Prescott because he was incredible. Like there were some missed throws, but welcome to the NFL. Everybody misses throws. That's just how things work. But Dak was 25 of 32 for 405 and four touchdowns. So at least for a week, the non-delusional absolute haters of Dak Prescott are silenced. I'm sure they can make stuff up if they want, but this was a fantastic game for Dak Prescott, and the, the advanced metrics do bear that out. Time to throw is very low, 2.53 seconds. His average depth of target basically relative to, to the line of scrimmage, how far downfield is Dak throwing the football was 8.7 yards. That is not a dink and Dak offense, which doesn't exist anyway, but it clearly did not exist in week one. The completion versus expectation, basically how accurate were you relative to the average NFL quarterback? 9% higher. I'm no math wizard, but I think that's pretty darn good. And then air yards to the sticks, basically relative to the first down marker, where are you throwing the football? 0.4. Point yards for beyond, beyond the first down marker. That was top five in the NFL. The offense was good, and a lot of the credit for that also goes to Kellen Moore. He also gets a stock up for me. I was impressed. I don't know how you couldn't be impressed by what Kellen Moore did in week one of the NFL season. There were many who were like, eh, I don't know about Kellen Moore. I just wanted to wait before I drank the Kool-Aid. I didn't want to dive right in immediately. I wanted to wait and see in terms of how does the offense actually look, I had we'd, we'd heard the good things, but I wanted to see it live. And we saw it live against the Giants. This was a massive step up from Scott Linehan. Prescott credited more for the play calling, and more, most importantly, the ways the plays were presented. But in total, yet almost 500 yards of total offense, and the vast majority of those came through the air. That is not something we've seen before, at least in recent years here. Overall, this is a very, very, very good showing by Dak Prescott and by Kellen Moore. That's a big, big deal for me going forward for the Cowboys. All right, guys, request here for you. Make sure you've got notifications turned on. I'll tell you why you want notifications turned on. We're not going to show it live today, but the next video is the Kellen Moore film. So that will come out tonight. So I know you guys are already subscribed because you're all watching right now. We got what, what? Let me check the math here. Almost 300 live watch right now, and that number I'm sure will go up. But if you don't have notifications turned on, you better do. You better get them turned on because that Kellen Moore film study comes out Tuesday night. That's the best way to be notified once it happens is to make sure you got that bell clicked. All right, some more stock up, stock down. We'll focus on the positive here. Six ups and three downs in total. Next up is Lael Collins. He also gets a stock up. Now, I can sit here and tell you that Lael Collins didn't make very many mistakes. Factually, he made no mistakes against the New York Giants, was effective, and beat his man pretty much every single snap. But you don't have to believe just me. You can also just believe pro football focus. They graded Lael Collins at 92.4. Now, I'm not saying that PFF is the be-all, end-all. Just another data point, another, an another viewpoint, another grading sample. But if you've like me and you've already watched the film again, you kind of notice that... Collins is pretty damn good. Now, it does get tougher in week two, and it gets tougher in week two for really the entire ta the entire Cowboys team because the tape is out there now of the Kellen Moore offense. It's a better matchup, a better defense overall for the Redskins. But Collins off to a very, very good start. Really, most of the Cowboys offensive line was off to a good start. So with all that in mind, which Cowboys player impressed you the most in week one? Let me know in the comments section. I'll give some shout outs here. I'll let, I'll let these flow in as we're now arguing over how much to pay Dak again, which is very uh, interesting to me here. But who was your most impressive player from week one? For me, I, I like what Dak saw. 
I think the receiving core, Andrew says Dak there. I think the receiving core as well. I see Moore, I see Gallup, I see Cobb, Cobb, former player, Kellen Moore. That's, I'll allow that one is there. Lots of answers for Michael Gallup and Randall Cobb in there. That's our next stock up. The Cowboys wide receiver core. I was impressed by pretty much all of them. I, I know that Tavon didn't play that much. Devin Smith didn't play until the game was pretty much over there. But the Cowboys wide receiving core as a unit was very, very impressive. And it wasn't even Mari Cooper necessarily leading the way for the Dallas Cowboys. It was Michael Gallup who had seven catches. Now Cooper would have had more if he hadn't dropped a couple of passes there. But Gallup had seven for 158 with a pretty good amount of those coming on yards after the catch or in yards after the catch. Amari Cooper was 6 for 106 and a beautiful touchdown. And Randall Cobb was 4 for a very nice 69 and one touchdown. You're, no, look, you're not going to get that level of production every single week. That's just not going to happen. That's not how the NFL works. But if you can get a, maybe two of those each week... Oh, I think you're going to be, end up being pretty darn good overall if you're the Dallas Cowboys. And receiving core also includes tight ends. Jason Witten and Blake Jarwin. Both of them caught three passes. They were used very differently. Blake Jarwin, at this point in his career, relative to Witten, he's the better athlete. Witten remains the better blocker. Frankly, I was kind of underwhelmed on the replay watching Blake Jarwin block. That's just not what he does great, but it's okay. Both of them had a touchdown. Jarwin was far more explosive there. But I will make note... This is my victory lap here. Although it's many of yours too because we all saw this coming, frankly. The Cowboys are like, Jason Wynn's going to play like 25 snaps a game. Week one, when it was a blowout by the time he got to the fourth quarter, 45 snaps for Jason Witt. He ain't going to play 25 snaps a game, folks. He didn't come out of retirement to ride the pine. He is going to be your number one tight end, but there will be Blake Jarwin. And frankly, you might see Jarwin be more involved as the season goes on. All right, guys, let me know in the comments section, yes or no for this one. Do you want to be on the Cowboys report? Obviously, the Y equals yes. The N is if you're if you're weird, and I, I guess if you don't want to be on it, I don't really know why you wouldn't want to be. But if the answer is yes, go ahead and type Y for yes here. And if the answer is no, I don't really get it. It's fine. You know, weird flex, but okay. But just kind of keep that one in mind there. Here's how you can get on the Cowboys Report. I see lots of yeses in here. Get your perfect fit and get a free fitting with our friends over at Kashiyama. They provided this little suit that I'm rocking right now for you here. So for Kashiyama, big thing here, by the way. Go in and get set up with Mick, who, who tailored my custom suit here. We are literally right across the hall from them. We are in the same building. We're right, we're right upstairs from them. Let me know that you get a, a, a fit with Kashiyama here. Let Mick know. We'll get you set up on the show. Yeah, that's all you have to do there. So, again, let Mick know. We'll get you on the Cowboys Report Show. They are here in Dallas. So, if you're in Dallas, go get a nice new suit because every man needs a nice suit. Otherwise, you just you just kind of look like a clown like Antonio Brown. And you don't, you don't want to be like Antonio Brown. So, get set up with Kashiyama. Some more stock ups here. Jordan Lewis, that is next up. Look, it's simple. He's got to get on the field more. Like, he's good. And I don't even mean this as, as, a, as a knock against Cheeto or, or Byron Jones or Anthony Brown. But Lewis is better than Anthony Brown. Brown's a good player. But, like, Jordan Lewis has to be on there more. Again, you can use PFF if that's what you want to do. 85, the highest graded defensive player for the Dallas Cowboys. Didn't play a ton, but got enough. Was targeted twice, allowed one reception for six yards, and it was really a check down pass. The one beautiful pass breakup and a couple of tackles. Can I get a free Jordan in the comment section, please? Like, he's got to play. And I know that he doesn't fit Chris Richard's typical size and, and arm length requirements and whatever. Jordan Lewis is too good of a defensive player to just sit around and ride the pine. It is absolutely time to free Jordan. One last stock up here. That is Demarcus Lawrence, who he didn't play the most in this game, but he did play enough, and I thought he was impressive in the 31 snaps that he had against the Giants. Now, we know that Demarcus Lawrence loves to play Eli Manning. He admittedly said he wasn't as impactful as he wanted to be, 
but I thought he was still the Cowboys' best offensive lineman versus the Giants. Honorable mention here to Christian Covington, who I think under the radar has been a very good player for the Dallas Cowboys so far based on the preseason and overall. He had the half sack, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery in two tackles. You could probably play him a little bit more, and you probably will going forward, but that was a game where it was out of hand in the fourth quarter. You're still kind of ramping him up a little bit. You don't need to play guys like Zach Martin and Byron Jones and Demarcus Lawrence and those older veteran guys out there for an extended period of time. So overall, for uh, De for Demarcus Lawrence, I was impressed. It was certainly not his best game, but for those of you that were worried about paying Demarcus Lawrence, in about half a game, he had a, ha he had a half sack, two tackles, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. That is a big deal for me. So I thought I was I was very pleased with how Demarcus Lawrence played in this one. Overall, he gets a stock up for me. I'm sure there are plenty of other stock ups in, that, that you guys could have mentioned out there, so just kind of keep that one in mind overall. All right, folks, again, I am rocking this nice new Kashiyama suit. You can check them out. The URL there is on your screen. I like this suit. It's nice. It's cool. It's even got my name right, right there, which is awesome. I know you can't really see it on screen, but that, that's okay there. Awesome suit. All right, it does not tear like my wedding suit unfortunately did from a redacted men's chain kashiyama the perfect fit the perfect suit and they cost about the same price as the major chains so go check them out get your perfect fit from kashiyama the smart tailor moving on now to stock down first up is zach martin i got three here in total but we're not going to panic overall so just keep that in mind here zach martin didn't quite look like the same guy that we expect to see. When, when Zach Martin plays a good game, there is no better guard in the NFL. When he has a bad game, like I think he kind of did against the Giants, he still ends up being a top 25 guard in the NFL. Now, part of the reason his grade was so low by PFF, 67.1, was because of the two penalties. The tripping one, I, I, I get it. I thought it was kind of weak. The holding call, I, I didn't understand it. I, I, I think they got the wrong number, frankly. I don't think it was Zach Martin that held. I think it was either Frederick or, or, or the tight end. Like, I didn't think Martin held there. But they pulled him out early. It's a win. If you're going to have a bad game, it's fine to get it in a type of blowout like that. But Martin did not have his best stuff. Mr. Worldwide Traveler says he was rusty. CJ DeYoung says he was his back was bothering him. That's all pretty fair there. So let me know in the comment section. How worried are you about Zach Martin? Rate that for me on a scale of 1 to 10. Let me know in the comment section. I'm going to put this out at like a 2. Uh, I, I don't think it's, it's the end of the world there. I think that, that they will be fine. I, maybe a little bit long term because of the back, but I'm not worried too much at all about Zach Martin. All right, the next stock down here, Jalen Smith. The best analogy I can use is that Jalen looked like the first year he played for the Cowboys, Jalen, where he it was almost like he was too amped up. You know, he was he was running all over the place trying to to make all the plays, which is which is fine. But the pass coverage not, targeted 9 times, gave up all 9 passes for 68 yards. He was the worst graded pro football focused player on the Dallas Cowboys and among linebackers with at least five snaps Smith was bottom five Shane Schaefer says Jalen missed a lot of tackles he did I had him I had him down for two total which is a very generous rating quite frankly but it was two in the end so Jalen not the best outcome there for him but I'm not concerned he's gonna be fine he's just way too good all right guys I handed out stock up stock down now you guys can as well. Stock up or stock down the suit? Let me know. It, I, I, First off, I only want positive feedback. My ego cannot handle criticism. So stock up or stock down my suit. And if you're giving up a stock up, which I believe most of you guys are, go book an appointment here in Dallas with Kashiyama. You can give him a call, 214-448-9037. We'll get that in the chat if we can as well. I actually don't know if YouTube allows phone numbers in the chat. We'll find out here live on the show. But book the appointment. And then let Mick or let me know that you got yourself suited. And we'll uh, we'll get you guys hooked up with a little appearance here on the Cowboys Report. So again, book an appointment, 214-448-9037. All right, next up, the Cowboys pass defense. Another stock down here. 
Again, we did not get to everybody. There's not all the stock ups, not all the stock downs, just nine people in total. The pass defense underwhelmed me. I, I was underwhelmed by it. I think many of you were as well. You let Eli Manning throw for 306 yards on you, completed 30 of 44 passes. That's not really uh, what I think you wanted to have happen if you're, if you're the Cowboys defense. And most importantly, and if you watched our preview show, the guy I said to watch out for was Evan Ingram. And Evan Ingram went for 11 catches, 116 yards, and one touchdown. Not really what you want to have happen. And that's an issue in, in, a, in a division that you have to play Ingram one more time. You have to still go up against Zach Ertz. And you got some other good tight ends coming up throughout the rest of the season. So with that in mind, and a, a win no doubt, but it's going to get harder for the, for the Cowboys. What's your biggest concern for Dallas? Let me know in the comments section. If you can pick one concern, let me know. I, for me, I, I worry about just the offense regressing. Because it was great in week one. And I think everyone knows I feel that way. But it's going to get tougher now. The defenses will be better. And then beyond that as well, you're going to see a scenario where the teams now know what is on film. They'll be able to counteract it a little bit better. It's easiest in week one. Then it ends up getting a little bit trickier. So keep that in mind there for the Dallas Cowboys. Let me know in the comments section, what is your single biggest concern? Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.